Yes, there are actually people who waited until 2023 to watch Lost. <laughs> if you're a fan of the show, you'll obviously be excited to watch this video. Hi, my name is Drew and welcome to another review video on Flying Vina. Yes, it is actually true. I had not seen a single episode of Lost until 2023. It's actually been on my list for quite some time. It is obviously a show that is talked about on the internet in various places. It's popped up over the years and I did make a mental note that I need to watch the whole thing at some point. Luckily, it's, uh, I found it on the streaming service and a little over a month ago, I decided, right, now is the time I'm going to watch the whole thing. And I did watch the whole thing, just to clarify that, so I've watched all six seasons of the show, all of the episodes. Uh, I actually just finished it uh, yesterday, so this is very, very, the ending is very fresh in my mind. And yes, there is a lot to talk about with this show. It's hailed as very, very many different things. It's hailed as one of the revolutionizers of modern television. It's hailed as one of the most complicated or even convoluted TV shows of all time. It's got many things attached to it. And uh, yeah, uh, my overall, if you need just the quickest of reviews, my overall impression of the show is a good one, but I kind of get that it is uh, a bit much for many people, especially sort of from the halfway point onwards. But before I get into those kind of details, if you're not familiar with what Lost is about, uh, <laughs> which I also wasn't, I mean, everybody will probably have this at least notion of, okay, it's about people who crash land with a plane on an island. Yes, because that's the most obvious thing and they are lost, these people. <laughs> that, that is what I like about the show. The premise, it seems very, very straightforward at first, you know, and very, very simple. And I am actually truly amazed how much you can make out of a show that has got that very premise. A group of people crash landing with a plane, onto an island and uh, you know in case you think that these six seasons that exist are just some weird filler most of the time that's actually not the case well there are some criticisms i have about the show that is not uh, actually uh, the case so it's not just people sitting on the beach you know talking about how they're going to be saved or any of these things they do actually find many interesting ways of carrying the story forward uh, but yes, that is what the story is about. So these people, they crash land there and obviously at the start it's all about figure out what they're going to do, you know, uh, trying to make some efforts uh, as far as they can to draw attention to themselves and the island in case someone, you know, some ship passes and they could be rescued, etc, etc. And we discover over time that there's a lot more to this island than first meets the eye. So I won't go into details about that because we are staying spoiler free, even although this is a show that started in 2004 and ended in 2010, you know, we're still going to stick mostly spoiler free. We do discover there are more things about the island and the story definitely veers into some <laughs> territories that I did not quite expect as much, but that is basically what it's about. These people trying to get off the island, trying to return home. Now, you've got a big diverse cast, uh, you know, you've got a lot of people, especially over the course of the six seasons, and it is a really, really well chosen bunch, I will say that, and what, what really, uh, while I was watching it, what drew me in most to the show itself was really the characters and the actors, so really great choices, and it's all written very well. I was very excited to see it's made by J.J. Abrams, who you'll know from many, many, many different films. He made the, you know, the new Star Trek films. He also uh, made, made the, the first, uh, well, first, I suppose, in the new uh, Star Wars uh, trilogy, he made the first and the third one. So The Force Awakens and Rise of Skywalker. Uh, you know, he's a big name nowadays in film and uh, who is also attached to the show is Damon Lindelof, who, well, to me at least, most famously made Watchmen, the HBO series, which is a phenomenal show. If you haven't seen that, I highly recommend it. I'll leave my review to that at the end of this video. Really, if you have the time and you've got access to it, watch Watchmen, the show, 
because it is really absolutely fantastic. So I was very excited to see his name here. And the characters, to come back to them, are just written very well. I really enjoyed all of them, the interactions they have, the relationships, etc. That is done really well. It definitely is what elevates this from really just standard TV to a higher level. You know, it's just, it's the writing itself and the characters. You feel drawn to them. I mean, they're, they're so different. Uh, uh, I think it's probably hard to watch Lost and not be drawn to at least one of the characters there. I was drawn to multiple of them because like I say they are written rather well it's not this is I also think what kind of distinguished it from a lot of the TV back then you know it's not really all black and white and that's obviously what we've gotten into more over the past two decades you know uh, that the whole world out there isn't just black and white we most of us are operating in sort of gray areas somewhere in the middle you know uh, morality etc it is a bit of a <laughs> sliding scale situation where you know you, you can't be at it's impossible basically if you're human it's basically impossible to be at one end of the spectrum and solely there you're probably you know <laughs> somewhere in between let's say and they do that so well so characters are in here that you might dislike at first you end up liking them later on and vice versa i mean in the whole show when i think about it uh there's only really one character who until the end i really just couldn't i don't know that he didn't gel with me if you know the show and you are interested it's benjamin linus until the end you know i just i don't know i just i was like really still don't care about him <laughs> just to, so that you know that uh, but yeah, that is definitely one of the strong points of the show. Now, you know, speaking of TV, it is, it is one of the, you could see where, you know, this modern TV thing where we've got all this good quality in it production wise and uh, especially when it comes to writing, you can see that starting there. So I get when people attribute something like that to Lost and I can imagine it must have been just really exciting watching it back then serialized where you'd wait a week in between the episodes i mean that must have been really mind-boggling just that experience and uh, you know if i had been like 10 years later social media would have probably exploded every week in between because you do wonder and you know in your head and ponder a lot of things that happen in this show the visuals are actually a bit deceiving because when it starts out to me it looks like really i'm sorry but the most bland 2000 ish ish era uh, tv show that's what it looks like really terrible you know i really hate that look uh just the quality it's really funny because somewhere in the middle you could tell where the shift was where they started actually uh, uh putting out the show in higher quality you know as we got flat screen tvs and higher definitions etc there's also a switch in the broadcast i saw in the streaming and that was really quite something because it really changes the quality but uh, you know if in the first uh, a few episodes and i think it's even the first two or even three seasons i've got this look don't be put off by that because the show is a lot uh, deeper than it may appear superficially at the start one thing that also really sets apart is the music you've got michael uh, giacchino i think is the way he pronounces his name if that's wrong i apologize who is a big name, I mean, uh, the most recent thing I can think of that he did that I really loved was The Batman, which came out last year. So, you know, this guy did a lot of work here and that is also something that sets it apart. It's not standard TV music, so they really paid attention to, you know, also use the music to give you certain, um, you know, just, just uh, emotions and underlining certain things that are happening on screen. So they really took a lot of care with this show to really craft a lot of elements in it. Now, one thing that you might find really off-putting, and I absolutely get that, and even at some point, you know, sort of in the last one or two seasons, I was like, you know, just throw your hands up in the air, like, okay, just whatever, because... <laughs> The plot lines and just what happens in the show, it's difficult to talk about this without becoming too spoilery, but it really, they go off on tangents and stuff that make it really, really difficult if you're just like, okay, uh, I just want to relax and enjoy myself here. Because we've got everything from all sorts of scientific things that happen, you've got sort of time travel elements, you've got flashbacks you've got flash forwards you've got side flashes not a joke this is sort of all sorts that happens and uh, it, that's where the, the criticism come, criticism comes from with it being a bit too convoluted which like i say i kind of agree with because i feel like they could have dialed that down dialed it back a bit and still would have achieved the same thing uh, while yeah i mean i'm a nerd and a geek 
you know, when it comes to various things as well. But I just felt like, how were they able to put out this show and not lose their audience? I'm really fascinated by that. <laughs> So I don't know how they achieved that, but definitely kudos to them for it because that mustn't have been an easy task. Uh, yeah, so, so they could have dialed some of these things back. It is very confusing and, you know, in the end, especially if you're drawing your conclusions about various things that happened. I, you know, felt like I didn't quite get the hang of it. I mean, nowadays, obviously, it's great. You can watch some YouTube videos where people give their opinions and give you context to things that you might have overlooked while watching etc and those things are great because I do feel like after having watched a few of those videos that I get it now and overall the story is is solid it's just like like I say I feel like they, they overdid it a bit but it is great that you know once you start seeing you know and feeling and discovering that there's more to the island than meets the eye it is rather intriguing the whole thing you're like okay what's going on here and that's the aspect of the show that I really enjoyed you know this, this journey this adventure of discovery it was it was really cool just that experience and watching it all you know over just uh, what was it one one and a half months or so yeah it was just a really cool thing to do so i enjoyed the whole the whole experience really from start to finish one thing they do i mentioned they do flashbacks flash forwards side flashes now that is a thing that especially they do in the very first season to introduce you to characters and it's uh, something that i also for instance enjoyed as enjoyed in Orange is the New Black, if you've seen that Netflix series, where uh, whenever a new character appears, they give you a flashback to show you how that uh, person, how that, in that case, women, because the show is about a, a female prison, uh, how, you know, what, what they did in the life and how they got into prison, basically. And so I enjoy, you know, when it's used as that tool to set things up. And here I enjoyed it as well at the start, but the, one of the problems I had is, they keep going with that throughout the show and like I say and then at some point it turns into weird flash forwards and side flashes and it gets very confusing as well but just basically as a as a tool I in this in the later seasons I wish that they would have stayed more in the time that we were in you know on the island just uh, exploring the character I get it you know these these uh, flash things are to explore the character and show you things about the character but I feel we could have done that while being on the island instead of constantly you know you're getting flashbacks and you're constantly going back to time before the island every single episode and to me that was just a bit much so I would have enjoyed it if they had a bit less of them as the show progressed you know once it gets into these side and forward flashes and it all gets a bit timey-wimey and confusing Fine, those ones, okay, are fine because you're trying to show something different with them. But if it's, you know, something from the past that you're, you're drawing reference to, I would have toned it down a bit, in my opinion. But that is, that is the only real big criticism I have. That's the one thing I really didn't enjoy towards the end. But even the convoluted stuff, like I say, I get it. And it's cool how they made a very, very simple story into something really complex. I, I mean, I appreciate that. Don't get me wrong. I admire that. Yeah, overall it's a fun thing to do. If it's available to you on streaming, I'd say definitely jump in. Like I say, pay attention to the characters and the relationships because those are the things that I feel really stand out and make it really special. You've got some episodes in particular that are just really great TV, you know. So yeah, the quality overall is just really, really good with this show. Just like I say, <laughs> be mindful of it getting a bit crazy and weird at times. <laughs> Many times towards it. <laughs> anyway. Overall, it's a recommendation, so if you're a fan of the show, I'm sure you'll be happy to hear that. <laughs> but that will be all for me today. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe. It is the best way to support this channel. Leave a comment down below about this show, if you've seen it, if you haven't seen it, you know, if you've seen it, what were your favourite elements of it? Just if you know, if you're being very spoilery, just, you know, just make that clear before you start typing the rest, just for people in the comments who haven't seen it yet, but I'd love to do spoiler discussions as well in the comments. A lot of things I really like, a lot of characters I love. So yeah, if you feel like adding any of that, sharing any of that, please do that in the comments below. I thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one on Flying Bean. Take care.